Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back on this beautiful spring day. It is chilly outside, but it's clear blue skies. The sky is doing funny things in my back again, and I still haven't figured what the problem with the camera is sometimes on the iPhone. I might need to do some investigation about it. But what I want to do today is something where I feel all of you can definitely identify with quite well, at least everybody who has a garden. So far in my past videos, I always kind of focused on doing a project, um, spending my entire day really tackling that project. And it's lovely to do it, but I mean, when you have a garden, there are all these other small things that you do. And I know I've already done one video in winter where I was kind of like doing this and that, kind of like preparing the garden for winter. And this is gonna be kind of like doing this and that at this time of the year video. So what I wanna do is literally take you with me through the garden and find myself some jobs. I haven't really prepared anything, just one thing though. I've been to the um, garden center of the hardware store where I found something that I've already planted together with you anyways. And I found it again and I bought more of it. I could not resist. So there's already waiting there. Um, but for the rest of the video, I'm literally going to flip the phone out, talk you through the garden and find myself projects because up until this point, really, I don't 100% know what I'm going to do with you. So let's start from the main entrance and see what I can find. The first thing I can show you is that the pots that I potted up together with you are looking really nice. And especially at this time of the day when the sun comes through from the back, especially the hellebores, they look really fabulous. And I can show you what happens when the temperatures are dropping a lot during the night. Hellebores, they protect themselves by kind of like start to bend over and then they droop a little bit. And when the temperatures go back up again, the flower stems, they will go back up again. But when the temperatures are really cold, as they will be in the next two nights, this part might get mushy and then there was it. So I'm really sure that one of the things I'm going to do tonight is carry both of these pots into the garden shed or the garage. What else I can show you is I went to the garden center and found some really lovely pots where I couldn't resist. I always buy the same color and type of pot. So I have a couple of more here and you can tell, oh yeah, this is also something I need to do by the way. I put it here so I don't forget about it. Organic fertilizer for my blueberries. Definitely useful. I have three blueberry shrubs in the kitchen garden. So something we're gonna do as well today. This is, you can hear it, a dry uh, fertilizer. So all you do is you sprinkle it on the surface of, um, well, on the surface, on the soil, rake it in, and then when it rains, basically the rain breaks it down and it gets washed into the soil. So this is something I really need to remind myself. So we do it in the kitchen garden. That, what is going on in the midsection of the garden? Alfie's going on. Not sure what she's doing, probably, oh, she's munching. That must be a walnut. She allowed herself a snack, I think. Uh, if I look around, everything looks pretty nice and tidy. The lawn is not in the best stage, but I don't really think I need to do anything in the midsection of the garden. Oh, no, I need to do something. Here we go. I forgot, I totally forgot about it when we cut back. So you can tell, and um, you might remember that in autumn, I did a little planting video with here where I planted some really beautiful heather plants and they are looking really nice. They've made it through winter. So if we just look at the center of the plant, you can tell they're looking nice and green and the first few new green shoots are appearing, which means it's definitely time to cut them because otherwise it is too late. Perfect time of the year to cut any kind of heather plant that flowers in summer or early autumn. And I told you in that video as well that um, those were just like a seasonal thing because on this side of the island bed, I have sedum, a variety called Matrona, and I want to carry them all the way around here so that the entire front of the island bed looks uniform form and is planted with sedum because sedum they're so robust and they could really cope extremely well with the situation here and um, as an underplanting for the walnut tree. What else? I already prepared my wheelbarrow so I already have my bucket with my tools here even not even though I don't really know what <laughs> what I'm doing I just put like some general things in here and my bag of fertilizer that I always carry with me. Looking at the island but I don't think I need to do anything else in here. So if you remember, we planted 
some beautiful heliballs here and some beautiful heliballs there. And then three drifts of hyacinth. One is already flowering there. I can show you in a second. And what I did is, when I went to the hardware store, I checked the garden center and I had the exact same variety of hyacinth again, which obviously excited me quite a lot. So I bought in total, I think 20, 20 more hyacinth and I'm going to place them in the new perennial border here. So I have 12 here and 8 there and I think this is going to be really nice because then those hyacinth are not only going to be here in the island bed, they will also be in the new perennial border and your eyes naturally drawn to the back of a garden using the same plant variety. And this is literally what I'm aiming for. So I think this will be beautiful. Back of a garden, there isn't really a lot to be honest. There is, oh yeah, there's one more thing I need to do. So when I was working with you on the slope, there was an area where I had some more landscape fabric here. And I just quickly wrapped it up and just dumped it there. So I need to see how it looks, if I can reuse it or if this is literally just like for the trash bin, basically. Oh, uh, here we go. My friend, the mole, he was active again. One big pile here, I think two more in other areas. So yeah, this is almost like given that I need to remove some soil. Kitchen garden, what can I do here? So obviously I'm going to fertilize the blueberries. So the blueberry shrubs, they are just right here. Three shrubs of them. Didn't really fruit a lot last year, but maybe this year will be better. And oh, yep. Ooh, there's one thing that is disgusting. Actually, this is still a pumpkin from the autumn decoration, which starts to disintegrate, but... I think I'm going to remove it tomorrow early morning after frost because then it's completely frozen. <laughs> Ooh. What else is here is a Christmas tree. So this is a Christmas tree. There we're standing next to the main entrance. And I definitely want to keep it. But it is in a tiny pot. Considering the size of the tree, the pot is really ridiculous small. So how lucky that I bought bigger pots. I could really use one of them today. Definitely let's pot on the Christmas tree. And I have three more heather plants in here. In a pot same variety that I have at the walnut trees and they also look really nice bushy and green perfect they can also be transplanted so I have even another pot I feel that is it for the kitchen garden we just keep on walking anything else that might catch my attention now hmm no, I think here everything is all right let's quickly walk into the front garden oh yeah now I see something well, that's a very quick project that doesn't really require a lot of time out of me. That was wonky. So here everything looks good, but you can tell that this is a frame for the swing bench and there is no bench because in one of my winter videos, I stored the bench together with you in the garden shed where it still is, but the days are really like sunny and nice now. And there was one afternoon where I came out with my coffee and I thought, Oh, it would be just nice if the swing bench was there because the sun was really full on this area and I could just sat here, but there was nothing. So this is definitely what I'm going to do. Put the swing bench back in here and look at this. The iris start to flower here and then one crocus. I'm not really sure where that comes from. Just one single blue crocus, really lovely. At least it's a blue one, so they're kind of like color coordinated. Another project I might need to do at one point of the year. Ooh, something I'm not really look forward to but you could tell the wood here might need a paint job at one point i'm not sure if i need to sandpaper it i think it's enough if i just give it a clean and then paint it in a very thin layer again yeah especially up there look at that that needs some love and attention this year also if i want to plant it up if i want to really use a trellis and put a rose or something here at least then it really should be like freshly painted but i think these are all the projects that I'm going to do today. Let's see how many things I get done, so let's start. I'm going to pot up the tree in the area where I want to put the pot in the end, which is next to the garden shed, because once the tree is in here with the soil and the weight of the pot, it's going to be quite heavy, I suppose, and I do not want to carry it through the entire garden. So I want to put it next to the garden shed because on the left side, there is already one of my Christmas trees, and I think it might look quite cute and nice and a little uniform if there's one on each side of it. And I already put the tree there just to see how it looks when it was still in its plastic container. And I was like, yeah, I think this is a nice, nice idea and a nice look. Speaking Speaking of plastic container, it took me a good 10 minutes to get it out of this because this container had holes all the way around it and a lot of the roots were growing through. One unfortunately broke but all the others I could salvage so this is a good thing. Kind of 
curious on why the pot was like that. It's tiny though, considering the size of the tree, you might see the root ball really small. So I think anything what's gonna happen to this tree is gonna be better to what it was actually. So I think it's gonna be very happy on its new life and its new pot here. A little side fact maybe, if you want to grow a tree like this, this is a Caucasian fir by the way. Um, most of fir trees and pine trees, they have shallow roots, which means they do not build a leader. They have kind of like a meshy fiber of roots that grows outwards. If you are in a very windy area, an area where you know that hard winds can hit, you might want to think twice if you want to plant a tree like this or where you will position it, because if they're not anchored really well, they might need a support system or uh, just a really protected area, because otherwise they might uh, tip over, basically. This will happen in my parents' garden at one point. There was really strong wind quite some years ago, and I would say a good third of their conifers didn't make it through that storm, unfortunately. Just as a little hint of advice, but I mean, this goes in a pot anyway, so it doesn't really concern me. I've already prepared the pot because we have quite some projects today, and I really want to get done everything. What I did is I put a crock in the bottom of the pot because unfortunately three pots broke during this winter, which is sad obviously, but at least now I have a good storage of crocks for whatever I'm going to put up, pot up. And I already used some soil. So when you pot up conifers like these, buy a special soil that is made for evergreens. This is what I did. So I already put soil in here. And then what I do is I sprinkle as a fertilizer, a long-term fertilizer, just a tiny bit of bone chips in here. I'd researched if it is a good idea to do it or not. I couldn't find anything really. So I just make the decision that it is a good idea because so far, wherever I put those, everything thrived really well. All I'm gonna do now is take the tree. I hope you're still gonna see me then. All right and put it in its pot. Try and make sure that it's straight, obviously, which I think it's not right now. And then I will backfill it with soil, firm it in fairly well from all the sides because we're still in a time of the year where frost can damage it. I mean, obviously it's going to be 10 times better and more protected in a pot like this rather than like sitting in the veg garden with this flimsy thing here, but still. Firm it in, make sure that there are no air pockets because any frost could damage the roots and this is absolutely not what I want. And then I'm going to put it next to the garden shed. I thought about taking you with me to the kitchen garden and quickly fertilize the blueberries, but the blueberries, they are planted behind the box hatch and that is an area that doesn't get a lot of sun, especially the ground, which means it is frozen still, unfortunately. So that project can't happen today. Gonna do it another time though. What we can do is because this is exposed to the fullest sun, which is beautiful, transplant and cut back the heathers. And that's exactly what I wanna do. You might remember I had done a video with you, I think in September, maybe early October where we planted those together here and I kind of predict that they haven't rooted in over winter obviously so I think I can just pull them out as they are. When you prune your heather plants you need to know what kind of heather you are actually growing in your garden. The east are um, flowering in summer or early autumn and this is the perfect time now to cut them back and how you cut them back is you would basically make a cut right where the flowers started so you go quite deep into the plant, which is, I would say in this instant, almost you snip off two thirds of the entire length, which seems radical, but the good thing about it is that you encourage new side shoots and you make sure that your heather plants grow quite compact and nice. And if you plant them like this in a drift over the years, what happens, you will have a beautiful cloud effect. My parents had heather plants like this and it was my job as a kid and teenager to prune those. And over the years, it was really just this lovely cloud of heather, like meandering through a flower bed, absolutely beautiful. Let me see how I can get it out. Yeah, see, I don't even need a shovel or anything. I could just pull them out. But the good thing is I can tell you Heather has quite fibrous and thin roots and I can see that these roots start to grow outwards, which is also nice. So it's a good time to, uh, cut it, uh, to transplant it, not only to cut it. When I cut it, obviously, I do not come in here and cut stem by stem. What I do is I'll take a bundle like this, obviously when it's still in the ground normally. And then I just come in and cut back the entire bundle. That is 
really fast and like that you can also control it quite nice that you really cut it a little bit into like a small dome almost because by doing that you encourage this like lovely cloud effect that they would grow into. Obviously if you have like, they're also like electric shears like the smaller ones, not like the big ones that you use for your hedges. They work really perfect on this as well. I have one somewhere, I need to look where I have it. But this is one of those jobs, I'm a little old fashioned probably, I just like to work with secretaries, that is what it is. This is exactly the look that I want to have. Make sure that it's nice and dome shaped like this. Very compact and if you cut your heather every year you really end up with a lovely compact plant and this is the best that you can have because then it's never going to look kind of like leggy or shrubby. So this is exactly what I'm going to do. I will just take all of these out, cut them back to a nice size like that. Need to remind myself that there's still two or three in the pot in the kitchen garden. Put them all in a wheelbarrow and then we plant them out. It's an absolute glorious, picture-perfect afternoon. I'm going to flip the phone in a moment and show you how wonderful it is because the sun is over the fields now, beautiful. But I can tell you that the temperatures, they dropped in the past hour. Now talking to you, I can even see my own breath talking. And that tells me, yeah, it was a good idea to take the hellebores and store them in the garden shed because this is exactly what I've done. Um, and luckily, since the bench is there again, I'm not sure if you can really see it, probably not. But since the bench was out of the garden shed, I had enough space to really put the two pots there, which is amazing. What I want to do, show you all the things that I did today. First, I want to show you how the garden shed looks with the two Christmas trees in front of it. Oh, I can see my own reflection in the window, I'm just seeing. But I'm really happy with the outcome. I like cemetery sometimes and I think this is a nice one because they are different kind of Christmas trees and not the exact same one and they frame in the garden shed so nice so it doesn't look like yeah, separate from the rest of the garden. It really feels like nestled in the garden especially now when there are these evergreens in front of it because during the rest of the year when all the perennials and shrubs obviously they bounce back it is really nestled into all the landscape here but now I think this really helps a lot to make it look beautiful but what is beautiful as well look at the sun I hope you get to see anything now with the flares but I just want to walk to the back with you where I put the hyacinth I think it's just wonderful to see the hyacinth oh the neighbors working on the farm I think you can see the tractor probably there hope it's not too noisy but here are the hyacinth and just these first shoots of green they just make me happy and 
Yes, they are a little more expensive if I buy them in this stage, but honestly, in a way, it's a little easier to navigate now because planting the tulips, I could kind of see where I will have my big drift. But also working like this, when all the perennials are cut back, obviously is so much easier and nicer rather than like, I don't know, I kind of felt like a little animal finding my way through a jungle when I planted all the tulips and this was just a way quicker, nicer way of doing it. And I really get to see where I plant them and where they are needed now. So I'm definitely happy with the result. I decided to put the heather plants down here at the slope, just in between the deadwood hatch on the left and then the last terrace where I'm going to grow my pumpkin vines so that they kind of frame in the path that should lead down here. And since the heather plants, they don't grow so tall, they just grow up to like 30 to maybe 50 centimeters in total. I think it's a nice height because then I could just use the space for other plants as well if I wanted to. If I want to put some perennials here or annuals, um, I could just have like a nice staggering in height as well. By the way, the tractor is still there, obviously. This is the sound of when you are living next to a farm, but at least I have a wonderful landscape. First time of the year on my swing bench and I'm loving it. Honestly, I think out of all the things that we built for the garden, this has to be my all time favorite. And even more in, I would say a month and a half or two from now, because then the evening sun pierces through the entire garden and hits the bench here. That is just magical because then you sit here and you have a view straight through the entire garden over the island bed into the landscape and you get to enjoy the evening sun on your face. I mean life can't possibly get any better but I still need to wait a little bit before that happens. I'm going to call it a day today but I can already tell you that I'm really excited about my next video because when I went to the garden center not only did I find nice pots there I also found something else. It is a fruit and it's one of my favorite fruit, but it's a variety that I never grew and that I never even tried. So this is really exciting. I saw it in the supermarket like a while ago, turned the price tag and I was like, oh no, I'm absolutely not gonna spend that money just to try it. And now when I saw it in the garden center, I was like, that is just a perfect opportunity, just crying out for me to buy it. So I'm really excited about it and I'm really excited to show you my next video what it is. Up until then, I hope you have a wonderful day, guys. Take care. Bye.